we are asked to calculate all of the critical points of the function, then determine if each point represents a relative maximum, relative minimum, or a saddle point. The first step is to locate the critical numbers, which is where the first order partial derivatives are both equal to zero or do not exist. The second step is to perform the second partials test. Let's begin by determining the partial derivatives that we need for both step one and step two. Let's first determine the partial of f with respect to x, which means we differentiate f with respect to x, treating y as a constant. The derivative of 9x squared y with respect to x, treating y as a constant, is 18xy. Minus the derivative of 2x squared with respect to x, which gives us minus 4x. Minus the derivative of 4y squared with respect to x is zero, because we treat y as a constant. And now let's find the second order partial with respect to x, which means we differentiate 18xy minus 4x, with respect to x, treating y as a constant. The derivative of 18xy with respect to x, treating y as a constant, is 18y. Minus the derivative of 4x with respect to x is 4. Let's also find the mixed partial with respect to x, then with respect to y, which means we differentiate 18xy minus 4x now with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The derivative of 18xy with respect to y is 18x minus the derivative of 4x with respect to y is zero because we're treating x as a constant. And now let's find the partial of f with respect to y. So now we differentiate f with respect to y treating x as a constant. The derivative of 9x squared y with respect to y is 9x squared. Minus the derivative of 2x squared with respect to y is zero. And then minus the derivative of 4y squared with respect to y is 8y. And now let's find the second order partial with respect to y. So we differentiate 9x squared minus 8y with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The derivative of 9x squared with respect to y is zero, minus the derivative of 8y with respect to y gives us negative eight. Now that we have all the partial derivatives that we need to perform step one and step two, we locate the critical numbers. We locate the critical numbers by determining where the first order partial derivatives are both equal to zero or do not exist which means we'll set up a system of equations using the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y, which I've already done here to save some time. And now we need to solve this as a system of equations. Notice right now though, when both x and y are zero, both equations are satisfied. So one critical point is where x is zero, y is zero, and the z coordinate is equal to f of zero comma zero, which we'll determine in a moment. And now to solve this as a system of equations, let's solve this first equation for y. Let's begin by adding 4x to both sides, which gives us 18xy is equal to 4x. And now let's divide both sides by 18x to solve for y. Simplifying on the left, 18x divided by itself simplifies to one, leaving us with y. On the right, x divided by x simplifies to one, and four eighteenths simplifies to two ninths. So we know y must equal two ninths, and now we'll substitute two ninths into the second equation and solve for x. Performing the substitution gives us nine x squared minus eight times two ninths equals zero. Eight times two ninths is 16 ninths, Let's add 16 ninths to both sides, which gives us 9x squared is equal to 16 ninths. To solve for x squared, let's multiply both sides by 1 ninth. 1 ninth times 9 is equal to 1. We have x squared is equal to 16 81st. And now to solve for x, we take the square root of both sides. And we are going to have two solutions. We include a plus and minus on the right. This gives us x is equal to plus or minus 4 ninths. So we have two more critical points, one where x is negative 4 ninths, y is positive 2 ninths, and the z coordinate is f of negative 4 ninths comma 2 ninths. And the third critical point is when x is positive 4 ninths, y is positive 2 ninths, and the z coordinate is f of 4 ninths comma two ninths. And now we'll determine the z coordinates on the next slide. So to find the z coordinates, we substitute x and y back into the original function. Notice when both x and y are zero, 
the output or function value is zero, and therefore one critical point is zero comma zero comma zero. And then to find the other two z coordinates, we need to find f of negative four ninths comma two ninths, and f of four ninths comma two ninths, which I've already done here to save some time. Both outputs are negative sixteen eighty first, which means the z coordinates are both negative sixteen eighty first. So we have three critical points, and now we need to determine the value of d to determine the sine, and then the sine of the second order partial with respect to x to determine whether each point is a relative minimum, relative maximum, saddle point, or the test is inconclusive. And again, to save some time, I've already set this up on the next slide. For the point zero comma zero comma zero, where a is zero and b is zero, d is equal to the value of the second order partial with respect to x at zero comma zero, which is equal to 18 times zero minus four, times the second order partial with respect to y at zero comma zero, which is equal to the constant negative eight. And then we have minus a square of the mixed order partial with respect to x and then y at zero comma zero, which is equal to the square of 18 times zero, or just the square of zero, simplifying d is equal to positive 32. So the next critical point, a is equal to negative four ninths and b is equal to positive two ninths. And I've already written this out, the second order partial with respect to x at the point is equal to the quantity 18 times two ninths minus four. The second order partial with respect to y at the point is equal to negative eight and the square of the mixed partial with respect to x and then y at the point is equal to 18 times negative four ninths, and of course that quantity is squared. And the final result is negative 64. And then for the last value of d, we have a equals positive four ninths and b equals two ninths. Performing the substitution, the second order partial with respect to x is equal to 18 times two ninths minus four. The second order partial with respect to y is equal to negative eight. And the mixed partial with respect to x and y at the point is equal to 18 times four ninths. And again, that quantity is squared, also giving us negative 64. And now for the final results, at the point zero comma zero comma zero, d is positive, and the second order partial derivative with respect to x is negative four, so it's negative, which means we have a relative maximum at zero comma zero comma zero. And notice for the remaining two critical points, d is negative, and therefore both points are saddle points. So in conclusion, we have the results here, but before we go, let's verify this graphically. So here we have the graph of the surface. I plotted the high point at relative maximum in red, which is this high point here, and these two blue points, or turquoise points, are the two saddle points. So this graph does verify our results are correct. I hope you found this helpful.